Now, you, we, everybody knows we don't have a clock in here, and, and I don't pay too much attention to the clock, but this morning I'm going to try to be done by quarter to twelve, because one hour later we got another service starting, and so I'm going to try to be done at a quarter to twelve. Don't anybody look at your watch, though. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't look at your watch, because that's a trigger to tell me to go ten more minutes. Now, if you want to go ten more minutes, just put up both hands like that and look at your watch. You know, That's all right. But other than that, other than that, I'm going to be done in a quarter to twelve, as close to it. This is a this chapter here is about the parable of the talents. We're getting into the we're getting, you know it's going to work out I think just about perfect by the time we get to uh, Christmas Eve, we'll be right where we need to be with with the Christmas story, so it'll work out good. I'm sorry. What was Matthew twenty five. Matthew, the words of Jesus, is all the way through the book. And this is another one. Most of this chapter, everything in this chapter is Jesus speaking. One of the, one of the full chapters where Jesus spoke the whole chapter, actually. <coughs> then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took the oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in to meet went in with him and to the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came out, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. This, these verses right here pertain to us today. The Bible says, watch, be ready to meet the Lord at any time. Any of us here, I don't care who it is, you, me, whoever, are only one heartbeat away from eternity. Tuesday morning, Michael got up and he didn't realize he was going to die that day. But just like that, he was gone. 48 years old, young, young. But he was gone, just like that. Nobody knows the time. But it pays to be ready to meet the Lord when he comes. That's why we preach forgiveness. That's why we preach that the blood of Jesus Christ saves today. That's why we preach you've got to repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to soften your heart. There are some people's hearts that are as hard as stone. And it's because of sin in your life. It's because of the things that's happened in your life. And you need to have that forgiven. You need to have your heart softened by the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to have your heart forgiven. But the only way that you can get forgiveness is through asking. Asking you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened up to you. So you have to ask, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm a, I'm, I'm a sinner. I need you to come in and save me. And change me and make me what you want me to be. That's the beginning of success. That's the beginning of success. And it's, you know, it's, I look at things a little different than some people do because I'm in a different position. I'm in a different position. Because of the men, some of the men that I have in here, you know, some people think that they can't bring their kids in here and they can't do this and they can't do that because of some of the people like that. Well, they got a problem. The ones out there do. Because anybody can come in here that wants to. Anybody, they can bring in 25 kids that they want to. On a Sunday morning, no big deal. No big deal. And the reason is, is because I'm here. That's why. Now, if I leave, that may be another ballgame. If I was to leave this place, then maybe the program would be over. But as long as I'm here, and as long as the program's going on, anybody can come in, no matter who it is. And that was set up by parole, and that was set up by pro pro uh, probation, because that's the only way I would let the program go on. That's the only way. Now, 
anybody walking in this building wouldn't know any different than any church, except we may have more men than women. Because that's what we deal with, mostly. But, you walk in this place, and it's no different than any other church. Except, we're not a church per se, we're a mission. And there's a difference between the two. Not much, but there is a difference between the two. One of the things, one of the things that I think church has that we don't have. We don't have a, a click over here. We don't have one over here. We don't have one over here. And this one over here can't get along with this one here. This one can't get along with this one here. And this is in every church in the valley. They all got them. We don't have that. And I enjoy that. I like it. I like it. Also, we have people that come in here and we know that they're hurting. The church has people come in that are hurting. But if the preacher don't preach the gospel in a way that they can receive it, and they go to hell, their blood is on that preacher's head. The Old Testament lays it out here just as plain as can be. It says if you don't preach a gospel, or if you preach it to the people, then it's off of you. It's up to them to accept it or reject it. But if you don't preach it, their blood is on your shoulders. And I think there's a lot of preachers in this family that don't realize that. They don't understand that. That they are responsible for the people that they preach to. And I don't care whether it's 2,500 people over at Fellowship Church or 2,000 people over to whatever that church is over there. Uh, not here, uh, the Vineyard. And, and so I, I don't care. They're, they have more on their shoulders over there than I have here because I have a small crowd. They got 2,500. And here's some of the things that I've heard. Now, I've heard it. I haven't seen it personally, but I've heard it. That the language in the church is as bad as it is on the street. Yeah. That's what they say. At Fellowship Church, 500 kids come over there. The kids bring in what they learn at home. So their parents use this language at home. They expect their kids not to use it. And when the kids get in with a bunch of other kids, they're just flying off with all these words. They don't even think a thing about it. And nobody corrects them. Nobody corrects them. And then they wonder why the kids, when they grow up, are a mess. They wonder why the kids, when they grow up, don't have any sound background or no sound doctrine or anything. There's no guarantee, I don't care how good you are, you can be the best parent in the world, there's no guarantee that your kid is going to grow up to be a very good person. No, there's no guarantee. But all you can do is you can bring them up the best way that you can. You can pray for them. You can counsel with them. You can talk with them. You can help them to make it through. And that's all you can help. That's all you can do. And then when a child reaches the age of 15, 16, 17, 18... Hopefully he's got enough or, her, or she's got enough in him to carry him through the rough time. Everybody, everybody has rough times. Everybody. See, the five virgins that went to the wedding without any oil, they had a rough time. They got to the wedding and they, were, they had no oil. Well, give us some of your oil. No, we're not going to give you oil. Go get it yourself. What that literally is saying is, Jesus is coming back soon. Be ready to meet him. Don't be caught like in the days of Noah. Can you imagine this? Now, we live kind of in a desert area. And we can go out here a little ways. We can be in the middle of a desert. Now, what do you think would happen if, let's say, three or four of you guys decided to go out in the desert and build an ark? You go out in the hottest part of the desert. You build an ark out there. You know what they'd be saying about you? They'd be saying things about you that they said about Noah way back then. You're crazy, man. What are you doing building a dark out here? It don't rain. We don't get that kind of rain. And Noah said, God told me to build the ark. I'm building the ark. He builds the ark. And then he brings the animals in the ark. And then he brings his family in the ark. And he shuts the door. And then it starts to rain. The first day, they don't think much about it. <clears throat> the second day, the ground saturated. The water starts rising. And it's up to the ankles. They don't think much about it. The next day or two, it's up to their waist. They're worried. The next day or two, it's up to their chest. No, let us in. It's too late. You made your choice. 
And that's what this scripture right here stands for. Be ready at all times to meet the Lord. And that means you got to ask God to soften your heart. You got to ask God to forgive you. You got to ask God to come into your life and change you and make you what He wants you to be, not what you want to be. There's some people that want God to just do things that He can He's not going to do. There's some people that that were, has been called. To
separated and doomed to hell. Because the Muslim religion 